my game mm -hmm. away. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're playing for something. Just got a man something, you. Everything you got, everything you got. Let's finish this. Do it, fellas. Let's do it, fellas. Let's go. Let's do it, fellas. Let's go. 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 let us go they know what happens next. So without further ado, free smoke. <laughs> Look, scared cause I'm drowning in silence with bad thoughts. These days I don't have nothing to say, man, the bad talks. I put in headphones on my driver. Pull up to the spot and give a good dick and good diver. I can't lie, I'm uninspired. No more pillow talking about nonsense. I only stick around to put some band-aids on my conscience. I don't know why I feel so bad, nigga. That's what we do. No foundation. We don't build no more. We just screw. Half a bottle of Henny, girl. I'm going with the wind. The same nigga say they happy for me. Ain't want me to win. So I'm done on my friends. Don't need help popping coronas and reminiscing. I just call up Big Bro J and say it's time for fit. And if I live forever, I hold this hate for some centuries. You don't know how much I have you do with would admit to me, but motherfuck all that I don't even know for up the time to make the call back Stupid low though, if they don't get the picture now Man, I crop them out of the photo, I can't relate to my peers Been doing this shit for years, I'm motivated by fears I took the wheel and I steer my sound Not dictated by fuckboys in Atlanta Stay gifted like this album was ghost written by Santa Boss Forever like they decided to throw me under slammer Every song's a hit like they pitching me underhand As I could drop a million songs, but they never gonna understand this Soapbox service for niggas Never given chances. Fight our whole lives to get these weak ass advances. Work twice as hard for this shit that they getting handed. And this ain't even nothing we chose, nigga. We branded. Still can't tell why all of these niggas mad at me. I'm trying to get a hundred so I can put my team on salary. Give it all to the art, man. I turn my life to a gallery. Uh, man, damn, with a fucked up masterpiece. 1100 shots, and I swear, man, I felt them all. If we ain't even good on our block, man, who can we call? Pre decline, state of mind. We broke crabs in the barrel. Got us fighting our folk, man, and shit. Just a life of peril. Week 10 in the NFL. We are back. The recap. <clears throat> Week 10. Yo, how's everybody doing out there? I hope everybody's having a dope day, dope night, dope afternoon. Whichever point in time of the day you're listening to this, I do appreciate you for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. That did not roll off my tongue the way that I thought it would. Okay? Let me try that again. With a little bit more energy. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. I am your host, Saint. And I appreciate you for joining me. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And I truly do appreciate you for that. And we got to talk about week 10 in the NFL. We do, we do, we do. But you know what? Let's go ahead and start off with the Ravens. You see, if you joining me for the first time, the reason we're going to start off with the Ravens, for I'm a Raven fan. If, you, if you're new to the channel, I am a Raven fan. We talk about all type of sports here. We talk about all different players, all teams. But I am a Raven fan, so we do focus on Lamar Jackson and the Ravens a lot. You know, I wasn't even mad that we lost today. Did we blow a game at home and lose? Yeah. Was it against a divisional team? Yeah. But you see, me being a fan that I am, I understand how to look at some of these L's and what. See, my life, my happiness in life used to be very much dictated on if my team got a win or a loss. But the more and more I matured, it became more so a, a learning experience throughout every every game, really. You know what I'm saying? I, You know, I just got too many bills to really get too mad in life about wins and losses that I can't control. So that's why I don't. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I don't gamble on sports. I think gambling on sports, parlays and all that shit done destroyed sports. That's why you got so many fans, so many uh stands talking so crazy about athletes and whatnot. Constantly pocket checking them and whatnot. Like, bro, if we didn't bet on it, fantasy sports, the GOAT conversations and all this nonsense, bro. Shit ruins sports. It done tainted sports in a sense. But it's very hard for me to let that dictate my life on a day-to-day -day basis for the simple reason. Boy, them bills that I got to pay be looming large in my head, far more than my team losing on Sunday. But, you know, I was watching um, 
nightcap. And, you know, I knew this was going to happen because I saw them put up the video before it actually was starting to air. And I saw the title and it says Lamar can't close. And it says C.J. Stroud, something about C.J. Stroud. But I thought it was very interesting that it didn't say Lamar Jackson can't close and neither can Joe Burrow. I, I was interested in not saying that. You know, Shannon Sharp doing his thing where he liked to go at Dak Prescott and Lamar Jackson. This is ridiculous. I, I don't get it. I watched Nightcap tonight and I watched how critical he was in Lamar Jackson. But then I watched him turn a blind eye to other quarterbacks who struggled today. Joe Burrow had two bad interceptions to cost his team the game. Dak Prescott balled out and was criticized more than Joe Burrow was. He didn't mention Joe Burrow's picks. They said Joe Burrow played good. So, once again, the goalpost, the measuring stick for a white quarterback, if you can throw for a lot of yards and you can throw for at least a couple touchdowns, then we'll ignore everything else in that game. Trevor Lawrence threw two interceptions today. You didn't hear him say the thing he said about Trevor Lawrence tonight was I'd take him over Dak Prescott. Bro, Trevor Lawrence been to the playoffs once. If that's how y'all like to measure Dak, oh, they can't win in the playoffs. At least he get his team there, though. He give his team the opportunity to win in the playoffs. I like Shannon, but some of this ridiculous takes, these is ridiculous takes. Like, when Pat Mahomes throw interceptions and whatnot, I don't see you being hypercritical of him all the time about it. And you can't just keep saying, well, he done proven he can win a championship. Because every year, somebody new, somebody different usually wins. It's a blessing that Pat Mahomes done been as great as he is. But to, for us to continuously say, oh, well, he done won. People were still critical. Shannon Sharp himself was critical of Tom Brady. This is a dude who constantly say, update your resume. So I'm not understanding how you hold Lamar Jackson in a light where it's, he can be critiqued. Dak can be critiqued. But in the same show, you ignore two other white quarterbacks that play like shit. Not, not even play like shit. That's, that's me being emotional. Who play in a, who could have played better, uh, to give them, their teams a chance to win. Like it, it you can say Lamar Jackson cl- collapsed. What do you say about Joe Burrow and some of them bad interceptions he threw in the game today? What do you say about Trevor Lawrence and some of the interceptions he threw today? What do you say about, um, who else was it? Where I'm going, where I'm going, where I'm going, where I'm going. It wasn't another one. Oh, and, and, and yet again. The Chargers, <clears throat> I said it last week, Justin Herbert ain't seen a, seen a big game that he won't lose. What did Shannon want to talk about? The defense. I didn't hear you talk about how the Ravens defense had one of their more iffy weeks <clears throat> in the last couple weeks. I didn't hear you bring up Dak Prescott and his defense a couple weeks ago when they lost a the game. But the first thing you want to talk about when you bring up Trevor Lawrence is the other team. What you want to talk about with Joe Burrow, you want to talk about C.J. Stroud. When you talk about uh, Justin Herbert, you want to talk about the defense. See, that's I'm not understanding that. Is these white quarterbacks just above being criticized? But at this point, I I mean, I'm baffled at this point. I I I don't I don't I don't know. I'm just because I see, I'm realizing how the media is willing to talk about quarterbacks and how they're willing to not talk about certain quarterbacks. And then I'm seeing how these dumbass fans will keep coming out saying, oh, it's no such thing as racist sports. Oh, you just want to bring the race car. Like, bro, I am literally being mind fucked right now. Like, I am living in an alternate reality or something like that. Like, this cannot go look at how crazy Shannon went on Lamar Jackson tonight on Nightcap. And when you listening to him go this hard, it's like, bro, are you serious? And then this is one of my biggest problems in sports, bro. Especially in the NFL. Stat culture, bro. Like I said, once again, bro. 
parlays, DraftKings, betting on sports, all of this shit done. The overs, the unders, betting on players over unders. That shit is ruining sports, bro. You should not have to put up all these gaudy stats when winning is clearly... See, that. if you watch the Ravens play, it's no question that they are winning because of how great Lamar Jackson is. The defense is playing great. Defense done played great before. You take Lamar Jackson off of this team, the winning cease to exist at the rate that they win at. But for some reason, Shannon... Talking about inconsistent up and what are you talking about? He wanted the most winning quarterbacks in the history of football. There's nothing inconsistent about that. You so used to him winning that when he lose, because that's what happens in sports, you get overcritical of him. But I find it interesting that Lamar Jackson is not allowed to have a bad game. For one, the pick six that he threw, his hand was hit when he was throwing the football. The ball was tipped or whatever. But Shannon made that very clear that that was on Lamar, even though we didn't see him excuse other players for that happening. I'm I I just don't get how Lamar is not allowed to lose, play bad, play bad in a win or win a certain type of way. I don't get it. He already fighting against the white critics, but he is also fighting against the black critics like Shannon Sharp. Who refute, and then you got the critics who will come in tomorrow morning and say, I just don't know how to keep defending Lamar. You can put together years of what Lamar done put together, overachieving at the rate that because of what people thought he would be, and it's still never going to be enough. It's insane. It's insane, bro. Just go listen to Nightcap, bro. It's some of the most frustrating shit you're going to hear. Because he say this shit about Lamar following it up after not saying a word about Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow threw an interception in the end zone on a in a uh, late in that game. That If you get in that end zone, bro, like people going to try to blame Tyler Boyd because he dropped a touchdown. That touchdown could have been a touchdown. Joe Burrow threw two picks that they could have had back to win him. Bro, and then... Bad coaching on the uh, side of tech on the Texans because they could have put that game away earlier where it didn't even need to be as dramatic as it was. But my confusion is how is er and tomorrow you already know everybody going to be talking about Lamar Jackson and going to be critical of Lamar Jackson. How is this same energy not given to Joe Burrow to Justin uh, Herbert? Justin Herbert throw for a lot of yards all the time in these big games. And you know, what he always doing these big games, lose them. But for some reason, he already got a Hall of Fame bus created for him. Trevor Lawrence. How, we can't keep using this excuse that we gave him his first year. I like Trevor Lawrence as much as the next one. What, give me the big games that he is winning outside of his weak-ass division. And he the played bad today. Trevor Lawrence ain't a dude who constantly playing good. You was telling me about the winning streak they done had. How many of the teams that they beat during that winning streak played in that sorry-ass division they play in? And you telling me, oh, that's not a sorry-ass division because some of these teams got a, a decent record. It's a bad division compared to the great teams. That's like me going off of teams in the NFC South having decent records, knowing that they play each other, beating up on each other uh, to get most of them wins. Like, I am... I'm at a loss for words right now. My brain is mush because I'm just not understanding how how one can be. And I'm not telling you that Lamar Jackson cannot be critiqued. I'm finna do it when I start getting to the games. And I do it all the time. That's that's my thing. And that's another thing that irritates me. You hear so many people like Shannon. And me, Because he know a lot of people are not going to try to pull up the tape. He want to immediately say, a lot of people think that Lamar Jackson is above being a pro, a pro. Nobody is saying that. What people are saying is you clearly are not watching the games, especially when you have to go the white route like an Eric Mangini and try to pull stats into it. Joe Burrow had decent stats when he was playing bad this year, and the tape showed you that he clearly was playing bad. But you know what you guys did? Oh, he hurt. Well, what's the excuse now? And this is my thing. 
this is why to me stats don't i told you why i learned stats don't matter i had to get to the point where i realized stats didn't matter because it was players who was clearly carrying teams and playing a big part of teams and the stats wasn't reflecting that and plus if you play any type of video game like uh apex legends you know how important stats are at the grand scheme of things you might have a dude who just get the kill at after the dude done done all the damage and walk away with like 10 kills but have like 200 damage and the dude with like 5,000 damage got like four kills we all know stats don't tell the entire story um and they also know that but they always use it when it's uh at their advantage see they can't bring stats into it when Lamar don't give them the stats that they can use but as soon as he give like Shannon Sharp trying to compare Lamar Jackson to Mac Jones and uh players like that bro it just show you the level of this what it, i just want to know what's his problem with lamar because i never seen a player as great as lamar who done shown you how great he is who done carry the team the way he carries a team i've never seen him on a week-to-week basis be so easily critiqued like where uh, people in the media are so ready to hop off of his bandwagon on a week-to-week basis like, we see Joe Burrow and Josh Allen be allowed to struggle on a weekly basis. They can put together multiple weeks of struggles, and nobody is going to hop off of their bandwagon. But lo- let Lamar Jackson put together a two-week span of struggling. Let Joe uh, Dak Prescott put together two weeks of struggling. It's so easy for people to hop off of their band. I don't get it. I just don't get it. And you cannot say, oh, they haven't achieved at the level of Joe Burrow. Bro, Joe Burrow does not have a Super Bowl. If you want to mark up playoff wins as if that's all that matters now because it fits your argument, cool. But Pat Mahomes is the only one in this conversation with a Super Bowl, and he got multiple ones. But he's the only one at the table with an actual Super Bowl. So this notion that because Lamar and Dak don't have a shit ton of playoff wins. They ain't got a Super Bowl ring. Neither does Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, uh, um, uh, Trevor Lawrence, or some of these other white quarterbacks that, for some reason, on a week to week basis, can play. However, and their their resume and status is still intact. I don't see nobody moving Trevor Lawrence and all these other white quarterbacks up and down the mountain when they have a, a roller coaster a couple weeks. But for some reason, Lamar Jackson can. And that's that's the thing that's really bothering me about Shannon Sharp, bro, because he could just look at the games or say he didn't watch it or just be honest and say he watched the end of games or something like that. Because it's very clear he don't sit down and make the Ravens a priority on a week-to-week basis. Now, he would probably say, how could I? I'm busy, yada, yada, yada. And that's cool. So don't speak on him the way you speak on him. Well, Lamar Jackson is a big name. I don't care. Then say, I'm not watching the full games. So when you put that out there, I can preference uh, what I'm going to respond when you say what you say. Because I know it's no way you watching these full games. I don't think you don't watch more than 10 full games of Lamar Jackson playing your, uh, in his career in the NFL. But you always one of the first ones to hop onto the, uh, in front of a microphone and go so hard at Lamar Jackson. And this stat conversation, I'm so sick and tired of this fucking conversation when it comes, this is what I said at the beginning of the season when I said Lamar Jackson will always be the one who pays for the Ravens, uh, being cheap. And for the Ravens being inadequate at their jobs. He will always be the one who pays. Nobody else will pay. I told you. When the Ravens lose, it's on Lamar. When they win, everybody else somehow get credit for it. All you hear in the media the last couple weeks. Oh, Lamar been playing good, but the defense, the defense, the defense. They can't even give you names outside of Roquan Smith at this point no more. Or the big names that they know. But they can keep giving you credit to the defense. But when they losing, Lamar, 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 Lamar got to be better. Lamar got to do this. Lamar got to do that. Lamar got to do that. That's very interesting to me. And that's still going on. And it's still been allowed to go on. Because so many people in the media who like to tell you that they fans of Lamar Jackson, they don't go to bat for him. They don't they don't stop the nonsense when it approach when it come up. Like, oh, Lamar had a couple turnovers today. We got to really question Lamar. 
Whoa, 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 buddy. Joe Burrow had two turnovers today also. Trevor Lawrence had two ter- turnovers today also. Josh Allen has uh, got more turnovers than any of these dudes in a uh, certain span. Like, what are we doing here? We don't change our opinions on them dudes because of turnovers, but now we're going to do it to Lamar Jackson. We don't turn our opinion on them dudes because of down seasons, but now we're going to do it to Lamar Jackson. None of these dudes is in, in, as individuals have hit the heights as Lamar Jackson. But sure, let's continue to doubt and question him every time he struggles. But sweep it under the rug when these other white quarterbacks do it. How is how is that a, a black person pulling out the black card? I don't get it. I, I, I just don't get it. And the fact that it's so easy for the media to continuously do this to Lamar on a week to week basis, bro. I don't get it. And at this point. To be completely honest with you, bro, when the evidence is so clear, you know what I'm saying? Like I saw Dave Chappelle say something in his uh, one of his stand ups one time where it's like, you know, we get so tired of constantly saying and I'm paraphrasing, but we get so tired of constantly, you know, arguing and fussing about what is and what we know what is like, bro, we shouldn't have to keep telling you. Uh, we want this and we want that. You should already know it, bro. You should like we shouldn't have to keep begging for this because you should already think that's something we deserve. That's something we rightful. Of. That's how I kind of feel. That that's really how I feel about this Lamar Jackson situation, and and, and not even just as Lamar about this African American white quarterback situation, bro. People shouldn't keep having to scream at the top of their lungs that y'all clearly judge white and black quarterbacks on a different playing field. The bar is so much different, differently placed when it comes to different quarterbacks. I just saw, and I'm not telling you that it's only the white analysts doing it. I'm saying that this is something that's done going on for so long, and it's such a thing that's ingrained in sports that for a white dude to open his mouth to say, oh, you're just using the race card. Bro, you got to be a fucking doofus at this point, bro. That makes no point. That makes no sense that that could be something that's uttered out of your mouth. How can you be so racist, so ignorant, so unwilling to learn that you won't even sit back and think to yourself, how is it that Lamar Jackson can carry a team on a weekly basis, on a yearly basis, struggle here or there, and then everybody question, do he deserve his money or if he a good quarterback anymore? When the stats and the eye test clearly tell you he is. But then Joe Burrow and them boys can struggle on a weekly basis and either they're going to give him an excuse as an injury or they just won't talk about it and blame somebody else. And they done underachieved. Outside of Joe Burrow and that team success, what other of these quarterbacks leading these teams done overachieved or achieved at the level of Lamar? They done basically achieved the same thing unless we're talking about Lamar's unanimous MVP. But outside of that, and I'm not... Uh, shitting on none of them other quarterbacks i'm saying why is i'm asking why is the grace given to those white quarterbacks not given to lamar jackson dak prescott and these boys y'all so quick to try to shit on the worst parts of their careers but if we point to the worst parts of these white quarterback careers y'all immediately try to hype them up with some other shit like oh but they did this they did bro like but sure Let the ignorant white dude in the background yell out, you just bringing race into it. All right, bro. All right. You can't get through to some people. It is what it is. But either way, week 10, let me run through some of these scores or all of them. Carolina was in Chicago, obviously, on Thursday night football. I did not recap that game because it was no shot. But Carolina lost 13-16. Indy was in New England. Well, they wasn't in New England. This was an overseas game. 10 to 6. The people of Germany, I think that's where they was at, have to be is this probably was one of the worst games they done ever had over there. Um, If you're trying to build the NFL fan base, this was not the game to do it. Mac Jones will probably, this probably his last season as a starting quarterback for the New England Patriots. Um, I can get on here and tell you a million times, oh, it's not on Mac, it's not on Mac, it's not on Mac. But at the end of the day, it don't really matter who is on. The Patriots got to figure something out. I'm scared to see what quarterback come in there next and see how they ruin the next quarterback, to be honest with you. Cleveland was in Baltimore, the game we just talked. Well, I didn't really talk about the game, but Baltimore was 
winning in this game and end up finding a way to lose 33 to 31. New and, and you know, I know people want me to be mad about this game, but it's like I said on Twitter, bro. I was just too because after this game, I went to work anyways. Plus, I was high as a kite all day. And I already told you why I don't really get mad about games that much. It's got to be real meaning towards the game. Um, this type of game, plus when you know the ignorance is going to follow win or loss, it really makes it so that you don't really give a fuck too much at a certain point. Um, but uh, the thing is, my my lord, my, what I look at when I watch these games is when I get on this, sh- what what I'm seeing, I need to make sure what I'm seeing is when I get so is good so that I understand it so that when I hop on here, the people who listen to me, trust me, they trust in what I'm saying because what if you trust in what I'm saying and I need to, uh, it's it's a double edged sword, right? You trust what I'm saying, and I and I'm thankful that you trust what I'm saying. But you trust that I'm getting, I'm doing my homework to get the information to be trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? So it's a it, it worked two ways. So that's why I care. But I don't really care about these wins or losses and shit like that based off of what uh the media because I I you know you just know what the media, bro. It, it just is what it is. Like cowboy fans i would think would have become numb to the media at this point because you just should know what you ex- to expect you got over emotional cowboy fans in the media <clears throat> cowboy haters in the media uh people who just want to be on <clears throat> I, I i don't even know when it comes to the cowboys at this point but it, i'm not mad about the loss uh some people say Oh, you know, it was a home game, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't give a damn about that. Um, But I'll tell you what. If you want me to have a pissed off reaction about how the Ravens is, uh, lost that game, don't worry. Because if we lose on Thursday, it's like I said on Twitter. I don't care about this loss right now in itself. If we lose Thursday, then I will be pissed off. Like I said, I don't care that we lost at home. I don't care that we lost to the Browns. If we lose Thursday... Now I'm pissed off because I'm pissed off for this game and that game. Because then that would have meant we lost two games at home to two division opponents. What the fuck? That will piss me off. Other than that, if we win on Thursday, this game that we just lost would mean nothing to me. I'm telling you, it's, it's very easy for me to reconcile wins and shit. Like It's just so many other important things in life. Once you done been hurt by other things in life and you got other worries in life, I'm trying to tell you, sports truly becomes an escape. Like some people say uh, sports is an escape, but they bet on it and all that other type of shit. So that's weird to me because you actually is not an escape at that point. With all the different shit that I got going on in life. I'm telling you, sports is my happy place. (laughs) So. I, I don't be mad about shit for too long. And if I am, I just quickly go. That's why I said I'm never watching baseball again. Because the Phillies really broke my fucking heart, bro. But I think I'm over that too, so. New Orleans was in Minnesota. They end up losing this game 19-27. I, don't, I didn't watch this game. Um, I know uh, both quarterbacks played. I was going to say Jalen Hurts. Jameis Winston played in this game. He threw two interceptions, so I guess it just is what it is with Jameis. But San Francisco got back on the winning skid. They end up winning that game 34 to 3. Now, for the people who say, oh, Trevor Lawrence should have lost his game, it was against um San Fran. So is he not expected to beat the good teams? Okay. Houston beat Cincinnati 30 to 27. And I'm not going to lie to you, bro. That boy is CJ Stroud, a dog. He got to be in the MVP conversation. I ain't even gonna lie to you. For a couple, for about an hour today, I thought to myself, CJ Stroud might be my MVP right now. Dead ass serious. The way this dude is playing. And see, this is once again why I say if you just watch the fucking games. Because I kept telling y'all, like, I don't wanna, uh, you know, make quick assumptions on CJ Stroud, yada, yada, yada. Let me keep watching, let me keep watching. I should have it by the end of his year, too. Bro, I don't need that long no more. Because I don't watch every CJ fucking Stroud game, so it's not hard, Shannon, when you watch the games. Bro, this dude is a dog. It's like, 
I was so as I was watching him again today, and you should know how much I like this dude if I'm watching him over certain games. But as I was watching him today make some throws in this fourth quarter, and I understand they did some dumb shit here and there. But I was watching him in this fourth quarter. He made a throw. And I can't remember exactly who it was to in this fourth quarter, but he had made a throw. And after he made it, bro, I had just tweeted out like, bro, CJ Stroud is such a dog, bro. Like, and it wasn't even me saying like, yo, he is a him. It was more than that, bro. It was like every phrase you could think of when you know for a fact, like you found the guy. The same feeling I had when I watched Lamar Jackson figure it out. When I figured it out in my head, that oh, this dude is is uh, is one of them. When I when I figured it out with Pat Mahomes, when you watch him, it was that one game where he did something where it was just like, yeah, he is he he is a problem. That's what it was today when I watched C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud had did uh, it was a throw he had made in the fourth quarter, and as I hit saw him make the throw, I said to myself, bruh. This dude is a problem. Like he is one of them. He he is he is great. He is going to be a fucking he is a franchise quarterback. Somehow the Texans got another one. I mean, this bro, I am I'm damn near speechless. I'm tripping and fumbling over my words. CJ Stroud is a fucking amazing, bro. I like his poise. I like his ability to read the field already at a young age. And he ain't perfect. He ain't perfect. But let me tell you what this dude don't do. He don't turn the ball over. And I'm not the biggest, oh, he don't turn the ball over. Because certain quarterbacks got to do more for their teams. Okay? So while I would love for Lamar Jackson not to fumble the ball and fumble those handoffs as much on them, or Jalen Hurts. Bro, I understand how much Jalen Hurts and Lamar do. Now, on Jalen Hurts, I don't think that's on Jalen Hurts. I think sometimes that's on play calling. When you got that type of talent around Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts should not be turning the ball over more. So either Jalen Hurts got to uh, look at himself on them interceptions or it's some play calling or something on them interceptions because it's too much talent on Philly. For them to turn about. But then again, I kind of make an excuse also because. I don't give a fuck if my quarterback throw a lot of interceptions if he got that type of receivers. He trying to get in receivers a chance. Sometimes you're going to make dumb throws. Now, do you want him to throw a lot of interceptions? No. But am I going to leash him up just because he throw a pick? Like one pick a game or leave you at the end of the season with 16. So you get lucky some weeks and you throw two interceptions a game in like four of those games. So fucking what? I think one of the most, you know how they say in baseball, uh, home runs or strikeouts or certain things don't dictate exactly how it don't tell the whole story for a player anymore. To me, that's the same thing, bro. A quarterback turnovers do not completely tell how good or bad a quarterback is because of the new age quarterbacks have to do so much more than just drop back, stand in the pocket, find out who to throw the ball to. Like, I saw Lamar Jackson get sacked from behind from T.J. Watt and fumble it. And people was mad at Lamar. What the fuck was he supposed to do about that? He literally is about to throw the ball and get a strip sack from behind. How was that not on the offensive lineman? Like, this wasn't him trying to extend a play. This wasn't him holding on to the ball too long. This literally T.J. Watt being great. This is what my problem is. For some reason, when Lamar Jackson is on the field, or certain players when they on the field, y'all for some reason forget that other people get paid to be uh, great also. Like, it just don't make sense to me, bro. It just, it's a, it just, it, y'all act like Lamar Jackson literally go out there and hand the ball to the other team on per Like, he just going out there saying, here you go. Or like, he play, like it's, I see bad play on a week-to-week basis. The fact that people part their mouth on a week-to-week basis to act as if Lamar Jackson is one of them reasons. I see players cost their team games on a weekly basis. I see players contribute nothing to winning on a weekly basis for their team when their team was built for them to contribute to winning. But yet we we, we talking about Lamar Jackson on a week-to-week basis. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. 
Green Bay lost to Pittsburgh 19-23. Green Bay threw uh, Jordan Love threw two interceptions in this game. Jordan Love might end up not being a quarterback at the end of next season. Matt LaFleur might not be back either. Um, and I'll get more into Green Bay later on in the week. Pittsburgh got to, bro, them motherfuckers is living right on that team. I have never seen such an inept offense. Well, yeah, I have a couple years ago with Pittsburgh. Such an inept offense. Such an inept team. We're only really, because I told my homie, on, I, I told Henry today, we was like, we don't know how to keep doing this. I say, ultimately, we just agreed that they just living right. But I said, good co- a great coach, good situational football. But I don't even agree with that. Yeah, you got a great head coach. But what is Mike Tomlin really? Well, no, nah, I'm not even going to question him. But I'm trying to get to the situation where I do it like I do hardball. But sure, you got a great coach. But I can't even say situationally they're great, bro. Go look at some of these games. It's not that they great situational. It's that the other team is terrible situational. And it really be like who can be worse for the least amount of time to get a team a chance to win when it comes to Steelers and a lot of these other teams. It's really, it's really amazing to watch. Um, anyways, Tennessee lost six to twenty to Tampa Bay. Detroit won forty-one to thirty-eight. They had a pretty good lead in this game early, but you know, y'all keep having a lot of faith in Detroit. To me, Detroit and the Chargers are the same team. Now that's gonna sound crazy to you because technically Detroit is the better team, but at their best, to me, they are the exact same team. The difference, there is none. The difference would be if I thought Justin Herbert was an elite quarterback or like one of them. I do not think he is. Justin Herbert has not had that moment in a game yet that made me think what I thought with some of these other quarterbacks, bro. And see, that's my problem. I just watched C.J. Stroud go out there and beat Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. I just watched him do that. The Chargers is at home and they lost to Detroit. Now, I watched Lamar Jackson wax Detroit in uh, Baltimore a couple weeks ago. And I just watched Detroit put up 41 to 38 in L.A. This is my problem. I just gave you multiple examples of different quarterbacks winning against another team who you might like. C.J. Stroud. I don't know if you think he's better than Joe uh, Herbert or not, but I know you done crowned Herbert before he had to prove anything. I know Justin, I know uh, CJ Stroud just went into uh, Cincy and beat a top tier upper up echelon quarterback and team. I know what Lamar Jackson done had to go and do to other teams before. I know what Pat Mahomes done had to go and do to other teams before. I know what Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, and all these other dudes. Because, see, that's my problem. Out of all them quarterbacks that I think is upper echelon quarterbacks, the uh, Lamars, the Pat Mahomes, the Joe Burrows, the Josh Allens, they go into other buildings and beat those other quarterbacks. They done beat each other. They done went and beat the opposing great teams. Oh, the Lions is so good. Lamar Jackson put his foot in their ass. Oh, the uh, 49ers is so good. Joe Burrow put his foot in their ass. Oh, Miami is so good. Josh Allen put his foot in their ass. Oh, one of these teams is so good. Pat Mahomes put his foot in their ass. Like, you really could have just said Miami so good. Pat Mahomes put his foot in their ass. This is my problem with Justin Herbert. Who the fuck do Justin Herbert got that I can say that about? Who do he beat? Who was the upper echelon? Oh, oh, so we want to keep celebrating that he beat his uh, division opponent, Pat Mahomes, a couple years ago? Pat Mahomes keep waxing that ass ever since. This is my problem, bro. Y'all have no expectations for Justin Herbert, but already got his jacket and his bus created for him in Canton. And every time I turn around, somebody talking about some, oh, he better than Tua. Tua might not win the big games either this year. But Tua do a lot more winning than Justin Herbert do, bro. I don't even think Justin Herbert career record is over uh, 500 at this point. Oh, but let me guess, because I know the Justin Herbert uh, excuse tour going to roll on heavy. Oh, it's the coach. Oh, it's the offensive coordinator. Oh, it's the defense. Bruh. I don't watch this team play good defense for multiple weeks and Justin Herbert play bad. So now when he decide to throw for a whole bunch of yards and they lose because of the defense, now that's all, that's all we talking about is the defense. This is what I'm saying, bro. It don't make sense. You know what the blessing is, truly? The blessing is to be white. 
to be a white quarterback in the NFL. Because Justin Herbert don't get blamed for shit. It's truly amazing. It, it, it is truly amazing. But I say it for the billionth time. Justin Herbert ain't seen a big game. He ain't willing to lose. Atlanta was in Arizona. And they lose because of all. It was a couple walk-off kickoffs, uh, kick uh, field goals this week. Kyler Murray was back. I know somebody going to immediately point to his interception. I could care less about that. He threw a lot of passes. It, did he had a greatest game? No, but he coming back from season in the uh, surgery from last year. So, in all honesty, Kyler and me played as good a game as you could have thought he would have played in his first game back. I liked what I saw from Kyler in his first game. I'm going to go back and rewatch this game. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not going back and rewatching this game. I'm going to go back and rewatch the set the entire second half of the game. But then I'm going to uh, wait to uh, whichever it is because it's a, it's a YouTube channel that will put out every single. It's a like a NFL channel. They will put out every single Kyler Murray play, but it's not like a abbreviated version. They will play every single play that Kyler Murray had in the game. And I got to check that out because I want to see that individual of his uh, in-game shit. It's so many ways that I watch these games, bro, to get the information in the not because I didn't obviously I didn't play in the NFL. So me talking like this, if one people are always gonna be like, oh, he didn't play in the sport, so you know who cares what he say. But listen, we're a smarter culture than that. So really, it's about it. Don't matter how he get his information, how he learn it is what he telling us. Do we feel like it's valid? Do we feel like this is something we can rock with? We can listen to on a regular basis. And yeah, it is. I'm just telling you, your boy do his homework to get his information. All right. But let's move on. Washington. They are in Seattle. They also lost off a walk off uh, kick. They lose 26 to 29 to Seattle. Seattle needed this win. Geno Smith and San, bro. I, OK, for, first off, let me shout out Geno. Geno had a great game, but uh, Sam Howe had a good game, too. But I want to say something once again, bro. I'm so fucking sick and tired. Of everybody who keep trying to call out Eric B. Enemy for us to any reason as to why this Washington team is bad. Because from where I'm sitting at, and I'm telling you right now, I'm not watching another Washington game this year. I'm just going to watch highlights for them. From where I'm sitting, the only positive on Washington is Eric B. Enemy. Anything that you might think is good about this offense, Eric B. Enemy. That's the only positive on this team. The fact that Eric B. Enemy can find a way to get Sam Howe to play good enough to play this good on like a every other other week type of basis, or he can find a way to get the offense to look as good as it do. Because Eric B. Enemy, you know, usually we say, oh, the defense give him a chance. The offense is really the thing that's giving the uh Washington a team. If the offense show up for Washington, they're gonna have a chance to beat a good team or a chance to win. If they don't, you know the defense will not play. They will either lower themselves to the competition or they just ain't going to play good enough to stop a team to win the game. It just is what it is at this point because my irritation will remain with Washington. I mean, now that you've seen them get rid of so many different great players on the defense, the great players on that team should have changed this organization. That should have been one of them defenses that we look at like uh, Buffalo's defenses or Baltimore's or San Fran's. They had the talent. They had a defensive-minded head coach. Somehow, I'm watching offensive coordinators, uh, offensive head coaches get more out of, the, out of their defensive players. You know, it's very interesting. And, and I don't want to hear uh, no excuses for him because Rob Salah seemed to continuously get the most out of his defensive players. And he got talented defensive players over there, too. So it ain't like he just having to get average dudes to play up above talent. Nope. He doing that and he getting his top players to play even uh, to get more out of his top players. Something that you cannot say Ron Rivera is doing. Period. So, you know. Listen. <sighs> If this ain't Ron's last season in Carolina, <laughs> then this is just, I mean, not in Carolina, in Washington, then that man is just living right. The Giants were in Dallas, and of course, 
Dallas waxed their ass once again. 17-49. And the Jets lose on Sunday Night Football 12-16 to to the Raiders. Antonio Pierce will pick up his second win as a head coach of the Raiders, as the interim head coach of the Raiders. That boy Antonio Pierce looked just like he did when he was winning that Super Bowl for the Giants all them years ago, bro. I'm telling you. But uh, this was a tough game to watch. It's always going to be a tough game to watch with two inept offenses. But I will always be able to take something from a Raiders game because I'm going to be honest with y'all right now, bro. Obviously, Aaron Donald in his own category, I'm never going to think it's a player in the NFL, a defensive player better than him. But outside of AD, And I know T.J. Watt exists. And I know, you know what? And it's between him. It might be between Miles Garrett, T.J. Watt, and Max Crosby, bro. I don't know who, bro. You want to know what it is for me about Max Crosby specifically? And I know Miles Garrett is going to show up on all the key downs. He's going to show bro. If it's a clutch moment in the game to be had, boy, him and T.J. Watt going to have. I don't. T.J. Watt might be the clutchest defensive player in football right now. Like I said, I, I, excluding Aaron Donald, T.J. Watt, because obviously Aaron Donald did it to win a Super Bowl. Uh, you can't get no clutcher than that. But T.J. Watt seemed to always get that clutch sack when you need it the most. Now, and, and, and it's always going to help that he got high tower opposite him. And I understand Miles Garrett also, and I can't even remember the dude's name that's opposite of Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett got talent on his line too. It ain't better than Hightower, but he got, I mean, Highsmith, but he got talent also. But Miles Garrett is a clutch player too. I, I wouldn't give him more clutch than uh, TJ, but he a clutch player too. But my thing with Max Crosby is, all of these dudes is clutch. My thing with Max Crosby is, he don't have nobody playing opposite of him. When you think about how great Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa, Khalil Mack, that's what, the, bro, all of these <clears throat> all of these dudes got somebody playing opposite of them right now to where they can't just get double team, triple team because you're going to leave the other dude open. Uh, look at the Bengals. They have uh, Logan and um, Hendricks. You can't double both of them because you can't double one of them because the other one going to get a uh, left and single. So when you look at the fact Max Crosby ain't got a soul playing opposite of him for what? The last three, four years. And you think of the motor, bro. One of the things about Max Crosby that I say every time I watch him play. This motherfucker don't take plays off, bro. He don't take plays off. He like a Jadevian Clowney on steroids. Think of how disruptive Jadevian Clowney in his prime for the uh, Texans was. That's Max Crosby, but even more to the umpteenth degree because he actually do get sacks. But now he's starting to, uh, he might end up having to be the umpteenth degree of Jadevian Clowney without the sacks for a while, though, because like Jadevian after J.J. Watt went down, he got nobody playing opposite of him. And that's a pro. Now, Jadavian Clowney did have another linebacker over there, uh, Whitney Merciless, who was still a great player, even though Whitney Merciless usually was playing the same fucking side as JJ Watt. I mean, as t- uh, him and um, Jadavian came off the same side. It was a dumb mistake when they moved Jadavian to linebacker. He should have always stayed on the line. But nonetheless, I, Max Crosby to me, bro. I, he's just so good. He's just such a talented fucking player, bro. I truly enjoy watching Max Crosby play. But with that being said, I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. Tell somebody you fuck with them. Tell somebody you love them. You can be anything in the world. Choose to be kind to somebody today. Go out there and treat somebody with kindness, love. And treat somebody the way you want to be treated, basically, man. All right? Be nice to somebody. I fuck with I love you. Like, subscribe, share. Please. Say now. I got the moves like hot sauce. Little mama taking the top off. I'm laying down getting topped off. After this, she know she getting knocked off. 
know she loving the money, so I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She say she horny when she take a shot, so I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in her tummy, scoop her up like I'm raking her summers. You would think shawty red track, the way that she running and running. You getting dumber and dumber, you out here chasing a bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> 